Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. So we're hauled out getting the boat ready to cross the Pacific Ocean from Mexico, but ran into a major roadblock with a broken flange for our sail drive right where it stops the ocean from getting in. So we send Jamie to the States to try find a new one while I get my hands dirty doing a little bit of fiberglass work, but also play dress ups with Riley in a bathtub. <laughs> Hurricane Irma boats Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Morning everybody, day three of the Parlay shipyard period. Yesterday was a bit of a disaster. It was possibly an option to weld it, but I just didn't, I didn't think that was good seamanship to uh, just sort of patch that and throw that down there and then cross the Pacific. It, it just didn't really seem like the right thing to do. So, um, we rang Yanmar in Mexico and there is not a single one of those in Mexico. There's none on the west coast of uh, the, the states, but there's five of them in Georgia. So the Mexican dealer here was kind enough to offer to drop ship one of those from Georgia to anywhere that I wanted in the states overnight. So our final option I think is for this guy to fly to Tijuana, which is on the border of uh, Mexico and the States, near San Diego. And there's this new bridge. What's it called? The... the um, CBA? CBA. What does that stand for? Cross Border Express. <laughs> and you, you come off your plane into the airport and you go down a special lane and it crosses a bridge and you end up directly in the United States. As if we needed any more pressure, this has happened. So everything's kind of at a standstill for that side. But this morning, we're gonna put the port side back together. We're not gonna be able to smash on Friday. That's, that ship sailed. I'm talking too much. Let's get to work. Here we go. Everything, Jamie's cleaned everything with diesel. Like this down here, the, the bore of this, um, the reservoir, all of this. This was just caked and just sludge. All of our parts here are spotless and ready to go back in. We want this stuff squeaky clean because any little bits of um, sand or grime or dirt in there, when this thing's spinning at 3000 RPM, you can imagine that just acts like sandpaper and just destroys the gears. So we're going to a lot of effort to make sure this stuff just goes in spotless. Let's get to work. So the first thing we did was reinstall the clutch assembly into the sail drive so that we could easily install the forward seals which were the original cause of the oil leak. Okay, now I'm going to put the seal into this housing here. This is where I've luckily found this old prop that um, has the exact size I need. So I'll put a block of wood on there and just press that in nice and square. On a nice and square. So with the seal set nicely into the housing, I was able to clean up the shaft and install the seal into the pinion gear assembly. Again, nice and square so that the seal did not get damaged at all. Or we would be back to square one. So hopefully that seal doesn't leak and that o-ring in there doesn't leak. Now we can replace the first diaphragm. This is the little guy that if the big guy fails, this will hold water and the alarm will get um, activated. So I've never done this before. I'm assuming this goes over here. So I think that goes on there. We should pull it all tight. Like that. One. Yeah. This is our new damper here. 
and now we can put the flange on. Remember this was completely shared before. Put him on there. So just a reminder that it's this flange that is cracked on the other side. This guy. It's gonna sit in there like that. So just that being in there up against the leg, it's gonna hold this all together. Perfect all the way around then. Okay, I'm just gonna put a bit of grease in here. And here. It's gonna seal that. Make sure it's clean. I'm gonna put that O-ring back there. Time lapse. So while we had been putting the sail drive back together, Jamie had been getting all of the prop speed off the leg so it was ready for a fresh coat. That prop speed was freaking awesome, nothing grew on it. Pretty impressive stuff. Line that up. Okay. We're on. What's that? Yep. Okay, I got it. Okay, can you push it away? Okay, now we're just trying to get this sail drive connected to the engine and then we're going to lift and then a couple of bolts in there. Oh, we're in. We're in. By the way, it took at least 10 minutes of trying before it went in like that. But that's neither here nor there. There! Okay. Is she coming down? Is she coming down? It looks like there's no pressure on it. No down yet. There's no pressure. Okay, that went smooth. It always takes a few attempts to get that spline. It's got to be exactly parallel um, with the flywheel. And it, it eventually just goes thunk, goes in. We've bolted it all together, so now there's no pressure on anything. So we just need to finish the bolts on the bow housing and then on the flange. I'm just going to run down and just quickly have a look at the seal underneath. There's our seal, looks good. Bye. Then it's good. Then we fill it with oil. And then it's good. Okay, so now that the sail drive and everything is in, I'm going to start working on the bottom end, the propeller end. This is the housing for the seals. There's two seals. One face is in to keep the oil in. One face is out to keep the ocean out. Okay. There's one. There's one. There's two. So this is the prop shaft and hopefully you can see that but it's kind of all dirty and it's actually a little bit scored maybe from fishing line getting in there at some point but we don't have real evidence of water getting in yet so i'll just clean this up with emery paper just do it nice and evenly on the sides and uh should give it a nice sealing surface for the lip, the lip seals uh, i'm gonna put the new seals in so i found this bung that fits perfectly so i'm gonna drive that down nice and square and install these and then we can put the the prop shaft in which has been cleaned brand new and close up the lower unit so that we can fill it back up with oil let's go so we've just given this a final clean it literally just sits straight back in there and that bearing is going to rest on the inside of here these are the new seals in here now slip this over and that'll be it. Here we go. Again, Tef gel, stainless bolt, into the aluminium frame. Now we can fill her up with gear oil again. So we put the clutch assembly back into the starboard side sail drive, but with a cracked flange, there was nothing else we could do on that side. What's happening, <laughs> What's happening, everyone? So we are, got the tripod. We are rushing back to the apartment that we're staying at because Riley and Elena from Sailing the Vagabond are doing an episode about electronics and navigation equipment. 
And I think Riley wants to ask me a few questions about our uh, previous bad luck with lightning. So I think he's dressing up in a lab coat and jumping in the bath or something. I don't know what that's all about. So Brit, she destroyed this perfectly good shirt to make it look like I've just been electrified. But the hole just perfectly lands right where my nipple is. You look like a trailer park boy. <laughs> On the way here she said, I barely need anything done to look like I've been electrified. I said he's already halfway there. <laughs> to make me look electrified. How does it look? Yeah. Looks like you just crawled out of a hole. <laughs> You look more than electrocuted. <laughs> you look like a troll. <laughs> it looked like you should give me a dollar. <laughs> What's with the? Is that? Is there water in that bath? Yeah, man. Oh, you're not messing around. No, no, it's quite hot. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Colin here from Parlay Revival. My, mate, thank you so much for joining us. No worries, mate. Go check out his YouTube channel as well, everyone. So you've been struck by lightning twice, mate. That's really, really unlucky. So tell me what happened when everyone was on the boat, because that's everyone's worst nightmare, right? I was down in my cabin, I was watching something on my iPad and it was plugged in charging, and I heard this like crack. And I got an electric shock through my iPad. And I just dropped the iPad, the oh. iPad was right. So I went outside and I looked up and the top of the mast was smoking. The VHN ante antenna was just, had disappeared. It was gone. It wasn't yeah. on the deck or anything, it was just gone. Jesus. He's Thank like you. sweating, the yeah, bath is so I'm gonna, hot. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> before I pass out. You look worse than I do. We should have checked the temp. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're gonna go, we'll be in uh, New Zealand by October and then we'll do like five, six months there and then head up towards uh, Asia. So if you guys are bouncing around, we'll, we'll link up. Awesome, yeah, that's gonna be really cool. Awesome, man. Thanks so much, man. Like, you look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, we're gonna go and have a shower. Very cool, man. All right, cheers, guys. All right, there you go. That was kind of fun. Um, what now? Have a shower. Back to work tomorrow. Let's go. So as you know, we got struck by lightning, so we lost our underwater lights when we did. And we're gonna install these uh, down lights from Lumatech. Yeah. We're gonna install two, one here, one there, each side. Um, when we drill through here, we're gonna drill through balsa core. So I'm just gonna put a little pilot hole in, and then I'm gonna plug it with uh, epoxy from Total Boat. And then we'll drill a hole that size, and plug it. So if this ever leaks, the bolts will be protected by the epoxy. Parlay's got best quality tools. There's our flat edge. <laughs> so you always get a bit nervous drilling a hole in the side of the boat. At the bottom, under the, this is under the water line. I guess, here we go. Okay, so now I'm in the bolter. Okay, so I've gone through the sandwich. Before I drill the big hole through it, I've made a template, because now we, we're gonna have the same problem with our three screws. And if the screw leaks, the bolts will rot. So Jamie marked and drilled where the epoxy plugs for the screws were gonna go, then started drilling the big plug for the underwater light cable to go through. Flat battery. Round two. Oh, it's nearly true too. There you go, see the bolts of core? Right through, bang. Okay, now I'm gonna fill her up. Just give it a bit of a poke so there's no air bubbles. Or oh, no. Or oh, no. Or oh, no. Or <laughs> oh, no. Or oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no. <laughs> ah, 
I recovered it, guys. What's the deal with this like nozzle end thing? How does that work? Ah, uh, two. Hey, I'm fucked. Don't ask me questions yet. Sure. Just giving a bit of a mix here and there, like that, just to make sure there's no air bubbles. Oh, bang, bang, like that. Jamie did exactly the same thing on the other side, and now he's going to show us how to store the total boat epoxy. Just like that. Oh, cut. <laughs> and all you need is another nozzle, but that will stay forever. Not ever, but for a while. So guys, as you know, we installed these in Linton Bay and Guatemala, but uh, the sun is going down. So I have to drill the half inch hole, but then I've got to get this wire back through. I might even be able to push it in like that. Now I'm going to drill the hole and fingers crossed I can grab it with, uh, with maybe long nose pliers. Okay, so the long nose pliers didn't work, so I just went to the old galley, got the old kebab stick and bent the end. Okay, so the old kitchen utensils worth a treat. I got her. So now we're going to wire the new light to this one and then pull it right back up through. Okay, so I'm actually going to use maybe some fishing line. But he's a bit sad about using me good fishing line, but anyway, we've got to get the job done. And that feels pretty strong. I'm going to still wrap some tape around it because like, if we can't get this through like this, we probably have to cut this off and then re-glass it. And yeah, I'd hate to see Colin um, have to get the fiberglass out and glass it, eh? I'll definitely be sick that day. Okay, now I'll pull this through. Fingers crossed. There we go. Got it. Let's tape this line on. Gave it a bit of a yank. What's the chances, guys? Here we go. Here we go. You probably can't see the fishing line. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, baby. Yes, got it. Fuck yeah. Oh, sorry. Got it. Look at that. One new water light. There you go. It's perfect. It's time to reveal our epoxy job. It looks smooth, tape's just stuck. Okay, you probably can't see, but I can see the little screw holes there lining up perfectly with the, with the epoxy. Okay, remember that time that launcher hit us? Uh, uh, watch, 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 watch! Oh. Well, that lunch is smashed straight into the bow, and this is the damage that was caused. We made these bows, um, and there's a lot of glass there. So hopefully it just bounced off, and all we gotta do is fix the gel coat, but there's only one way to find out. There we go. It uh, cracked that gel coat right around, but I got back to the uh, fiberglass and the fiberglass is perfect. So this is luckily just the gel coat re repair. It's a fairly big gel coat repair. And we're gonna have to color match it or else it's gonna look stupid, but no glass work, thank God. I'm gonna mix up some gel coat with some um, cover seal and just use a, um, a spatula and just spread that on there. Just to fill, it's a, it's a few millimeters thick, that, that uh, gel coat, so I'll just build that back up before I do the final one. Okay guys, so now I've just reached the airport in Puerto Vallarta and I am flying to the States. 24 hour mission, here we go. So yeah, some bridge I had to walk across, I've never done it, but it's about to happen. Pretty dodgy, that's all I can think about. Leave a comment below and tell us how do you try and get three seats on a plane, like all by yourself in one row? I always wait till dead last until they nearly call on my name and I get on. So yeah, let me know. And then the guy came and tried to pick us up and smash the stern here as well. 
So I'm gonna do the same thing. The gel coat's all chipped off, but the glasswork looks fine. So I just scanned that, I went for some gates and I don't know, I think I'm through now. Ah, the lighting is shit. Hey guys, so I uh, made it to the hotel, that wasn't too bad. I'm gonna go to bed and I'll wake up early and we'll go again tomorrow. Morning guys, so we didn't make it. So now the boat behind us has to go in and they have to move us. They're not happy, we're not happy, nobody's happy. Uh, they just put another boat in and they're gonna move us over to here to take their spot. So, it's just one of those things. Jamie took the Cross Border Express. Hang on, I gotta make sure they put these in the right place. Okay, good, last time they put the strap accidentally on the um, transducer. We should be able to get back in the water by Monday now. Fingers crossed. They got that forward strap right on that bulkhead that we rebuilt, so I have absolutely no concerns there. And the aft strap is right on the engine room bulkhead. Those are the two main bulkheads of the boat. Um, so Parlay is super safe right now. This is our resting place till Monday. You think we can do it? Oh yeah, we got this. Okay guys, so it's Friday morning, woke up. Checked out of the penthouse over here, uh, waiting for one of our followers, Ian, to come and pick me up. He's volunteered to pick me up and we go pick up the part. And then he'll drop me back at the border. So guys, here's Ian, one of our followers. Um, now we're going to pick up the flange, so that's gonna be the big one. So apparently this is the spot here. Doesn't look like we're gonna pick a flange up, that's for sure. Okay, that was the wrong spot. Okay, we've found the spot. Now let's see if it's the right bit. That's it. So that feels good. But by geez, it doesn't look like they're gonna sell Genmar or we even have anything. A little bit dodgy, but she's good. We got it. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Hey, no Cheers, worries, brother. You saved us. <laughs> Thank you. Later that day, the yard guys got started on the antifoul, as we were just too busy to get it all done on our own. We went with Total Boat's Spartan antifoul, which needs the hull to be super clean before rolling the antifoul. So they got a couple of girls to come and clean the hull with uh, soapy water, and then two guys are going ahead wiping it down with surface prep. It's a one and a half hour wait time between coats, so by the time they get that and then that done, they'll be ready to start there. got a message from Jamie. He's just got to get through customs. He's importing parts into Mexico. Hey, so I just got through customs. Um, they pulled me up with it. And they opened my bag and I gave them the zinc receipt for $86. Um, and then they said, no, nah, you're fine. You don't have to pay a tax on it. Um, so I guess I'm through now with it. But should I check my bag? You know, <laughs> so you normally have to pay 19% tax on anything you bring into the country and they, they let them through. No tax. His flight's not till 8.40. He's nervous. He, he likes going to those business lounges. You pay like 30 bucks and you go to a business class lounge and it's all you can drink and all you can eat. So 
and he just sits there for four hours and goes on Instagram and just drinks beers. <laughs> oh, stoked. So he's in Mexico now. So we made it. We're home and hose now. Tomorrow we can hopefully get that wholesale drive and engine back together. It's an absolute mess in there right now. And then Sunday we can do the prop speed and the light speed and all of those other products too. This is good news. We have to go on on Monday. We've told them we're going in. 